It's been two years since the last full redesign of the iPhone, and we couldn't be more anxious to see the new upgrades up close. So we sent our teardown team all the way to Melbourne, Australia to get our first look inside the new iPhone 6. Hi, I'm Gwendolyn with iFixit, and today we're tearing down the brand new iPhone 6. The iPhone 6 is the first major redesign of the iPhone in two years, and arguably is one of the most dramatic. Not only has the general appearance changed, but Apple has also rearranged the position of the power button, moving it from the top right of the phone to the upper right-hand side. Other than that, the iPhone has grown. This new version measures in at 138.1 millimeters by 67 millimeters. The iPhone 6 now sports a 4.7 inch retina display that has a resolution of 1334 by 750 and a pixel density of 326 pixels per inch. But while it has grown in length and width, the iPhone 6 has actually gotten thinner, measuring in at a mere 6.9 millimeters. And as far as weight goes, the iPhone has gotten a bit heavier, weighing in at 129 grams. Getting into the phone was quite familiar. We only needed our trusty pentalobe driver, never do an iPhone repair without it, and our super cool eye clack. And just like that, we're in. We are so happy to see the Touch ID cable has been moved in both the 6 and its big brother, the 6 Plus. This is absolutely going to be remembered when we calculate the repairability score. Now we can check out the battery. We disconnect the battery after quickly detaching the battery connector bracket and begin poking around for the battery adhesive tabs. These tabs make removing the battery super easy even though it's glued in place, but it's important to note that if pulled wrong, you're in for quite an ordeal getting your battery out. We got our battery out just fine. This is a 1810 milliamp hour lithium ion polymer battery, which is just a bit smaller than the iPhone 6 Plus's 2915 milliamp hour battery. Apple claims this battery will give you up to 14 hours on 3G and 250 hours on standby time. With the battery safely removed, we turn our attention to the display assembly. The display assembly is home to the front-facing camera, earpiece, the home button, and of course, the display. With a little help from our tweezers, the front-facing camera pops right off, bringing along with it the earpiece. This is a 1.2 megapixel FaceTime camera that now has burst selfie mode, which is exactly what the world needed. On the other side of the display assembly, we find the home button. And just like the 6 Plus, the home button is held on by a metal bracket. And once the bracket is removed, the home button pops right out. Awesome. Next up is the rear-facing camera. Though it lacks the fancy optical stabilization of the 6 Plus's camera, this camera shares virtually all the other specs. This is an 8 megapixel camera with an f2.2 aperture that also shares the 6 Plus's added feature of phase detection autofocus. And now it's time for the logic board. On board, you'll find the brand new 64-bit A8 system on a chip with presumably the same one gigabyte of RAM found on the iPhone 6 Plus. Other chips of note include the Invincense MP67B 6-axis gyroscope and accelerometer combo, the 16 gigabytes of SanDisk NAND flash storage, and the NXP 65V10 NFC module plus secure element, which is responsible for the 6's new NFC feature. The logic board is out, so now we can focus on the bottom of the phone where the speaker assembly, lightning, and headphone jack cables reside. It only takes a couple of screws and your fingers to remove the speaker assembly. And like the iPhone 6 Plus, the lightning connector and headphone jack are on the same cable, which is screwed and glued to the rear case. Our rear case is looking pretty bare at this point, but at the top of the phone, we still have the extremely delicate and also glued on power button and volume button cables. We've come to the end of our teardown, which means it's time to talk repairability. At iFixit, it's our mission to teach people how to repair everything, so we give every gadget we tear down a repairability score between 1 and 10. 10 being the easiest to repair and 1 being the most difficult. The iPhone 6 scored a 7 out of 10, and here's why. On the upside, the display assembly comes out of the phone first, simplifying screen repairs. Accessing the battery is straightforward and not at all difficult. And the fingerprint sensor cable has been rerouted, fixing a significant repairability issue with the iPhone 5S and making the phone much safer to open. But on the downside, the iPhone still uses proprietary pentalobe screws on the exterior, requiring a specialty screwdriver to remove them. And finally, Apple does not share repair information for the iPhone 6 Plus to independent repair shops or consumers. 
And that's our teardown. Special thanks to the folks at Mac Fix It Australia for once again hosting us on one of our international teardowns. And if you'd like to check out the complete teardown, including tons of beautiful high quality images, head on over to ifixit.com. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel to stay up to date on all our latest teardowns and repair videos. You can follow us on Twitter at ifixit and give us a like on Facebook at facebook.com slash ifixit.